Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel and we have the TBR monster returning for the month of June because there are not one, not two, but three reading events that I'm going to be participating in. Two of which I am either hosting or co-hosting. So I've got a very full month. I've got some excellent reading I hope ahead of me. So let's just dive right into what those books are and what this month of June is going to look like. So first we have June on the Range, which is an event uh, being hosted by and the brainchild of Michael K. Vaughn. And because he's been such a, a fantastic supporter for me and my channel over the last year, of course I'm going to join in on June on the Range, even if I've never read a Western in my life. I'm going to pick one up, at least one, because I want to support Michael. And I was lucky enough to win a giveaway from Greg at Another Bibliophile Reads. And so I was given uh, three volumes here. So we have a Max Brand book. We have a Ray Hogan book. And we have a Louis L'Amour book. So I will read one of those three, at least, uh, during the month of June and participate in June on the Range to show some support for Michael. The next uh, event for June is taking place on June 8th, and this is the one that is being created and hosted by me. Uh, June 8th is my birthday, and so I had the idea of let's have 24 hours where um, if somebody wants to show some support, they would pick up and read a short story by an author of, that I picked. And this year, I'm picking Harlan Ellison because I've really been enjoying his short fiction. Uh, and so I picked up a copy of Angry Candy, uh, which is a collection of short stories. Uh, so I'm going to be reading as many of these as I can get through over the course of that day. It may be one, it may be five, it might be the whole book. I don't know. But for one day, all of my other plans in June are going to be set aside because I'm going to be reading Harlan Ellison. And I'm so excited. If you've never read anything by him, my strong recommendation is to pick up and read Repent Harlequin, said the TikTok man. Otherwise, yeah, I'll be having a video coming out later this week, hopefully, uh, where I talk about a couple of his stories that I've read so far and giving some thoughts on each one uh, so that is kind of a uh, set of recommendations if you are looking for where to start with reading Harlan Ellison. So then we have, last but not least, the readathon of all readathons, and that is Angels Thon, coming in June. And this is hosted by Jennifer Brooks and Tori from Hufflepuff Discovery. They ran this for the first time last year, and I absolutely loved it. The premise is that you will read books that were written prior to 1700. The only re requirement to participate is to read something from that. Um, there are a couple of prompts that are real easy to follow. Uh, you can have them kind of double, triple, quadruple up. And the there's also a group read uh, that will be reading together. Uh, but you don't even have to read that to participate in Inches Thon. So the group read is Book of the City of Ladies by Christine de Pizan, which I'm very, very excited about. It's written around 1400, uh, and I think it's going to be a, a fantastic reading experience. So the different prompts are to read a poetry, to read a play, to read something non-fiction, to read a book over 300 pages, to read something that's a religious text, which could be a religious work, or uh, something that just involves uh, something out of religion or mythology, such as the uh, various uh, Greek gods and goddesses, the Norse gods and goddesses, uh, all would fit. And then to read something that it's time to stop thinking about reading it and get around to reading it. Uh, basically, something that's been on your TBR that you've wanted to read someday but just haven't gotten around to, and here's your excuse to get to it. So the one book for sure I'm going to be reading, other than City of Ladies, 
is going to be a buddy read that I have with my friend Ann from, and uh, I, I'm excited about this one. We're going to be reading City of God, the first part of it, so the, roughly the first half of this book. This is a big, big book. Uh, the first half is about 450 pages long, and uh, I'm excited to read this. And we'll evaluate after that halfway point if we want to continue reading it later in the year to, to finish the second half. Or, you know, if we just want to set it aside. And I, I can't wait to dive into this because I enjoyed Confessions by St. Augustine as well. My other chunker, which is one that I'd love to start, I, I doubt I'll get very far into it, but I would love to start, Tale of the Genji. That this was recently on Steve Donahue's top 20 books. Um, and if nothing else, that convinces me that this should be one that I read. Uh, a lot of people have been getting War and Peace as their big ginormous book off of their TBR that they've always wanted to read someday. Uh, this is my pick that I'm going to be reading sometime this year, and I would love to get a start on it in June. My play that I'm going to read is going to be The Tragedy of Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe, a contemporary Shakespeare. And then the rest of these are maybe I'll get around to reading some of them. I've got uh, Deeds of the Saxons by Wonder Kind of Corby, uh, who was writing this, I believe, in the mid to late 900s. Um, I, I enjoy that time between 700 and 950, 1,000 uh, pretty much b before the Battle of Hastings uh, in England. Uh, so the Anglo-Saxon English and the Vikings and, and all of those dynamics. So it'll be interesting to read something by the uh, a contemporary around that time. I got The Last Days of Socrates by Plato, which uh, was kind of inspired by Sandy from Miss Reads a lot because she recently did a video where she looked back on her first book haul uh, roughly a year ago, uh, and so tried to see how many of those books from that first book haul has she read at this point in time. And so I went back and did the same thing. Uh, I didn't make a video about it, but uh, I did pretty good out of, I think, seven or eight books. There were two that I hadn't read yet, this being one of them. So I figured this would fit really well in Ancient's Thought. I may try to chip my way through uh, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. I know Steve Donahue doesn't uh, think very highly of this. It's one that I'd like to read. Uh, and it is broken down in a way that makes it real easy to fit in a little bit of daily reading each day. Uh, and so that might be how that gets relegated. I've got uh, Middle English Romances, not to read this entire text, even though roughly half of it is sources and other commentary, uh, as you would expect from a Norton Critical Edition. Uh, but there are seven romances in here, uh, and a few of them are kind of short. Uh, Sir Orfeo, which I'm familiar with from Tolkien's translation, uh, would be an interesting one to read in its original. The Wedding of Sir Gawain and Dame Ragnall is definitely the one I'm going to be reading. And I might even read The Siege of Mulane, uh, which I believe might be uh, about Crusades. So um, I'm, I'm excited to dive into some of those. And then the rest of these are all Jack from the Rambling Raconteur's recommendations and fault. Um, I'm going to read some Chinese poetry. But uh, he recommended Li Po and Tu Fu. So I'm going to be checking out some poetry by them. I'm going to be checking out, uh, potentially, Viz and Raman by Gurgani, uh, which is a, a, an ancient Persian epic poem. And then uh, the Shaname by Ferdowski, which is, I believe, another Persian epic that is one of the longest epic poems uh, that has ever been written. And it sounds so good. And I love epic poetry, and I'm excited to hopefully expand outside of just uh, European uh, cultures during this period and, and gain some exposure. And he was kind enough to make those recommendations for me uh, because I, I 
absolutely trust and value his input because he's one of the most widely read people that I know on BookTube. Uh, he gave me a whole bunch of other great recommendations. Uh, there's no way I can go through all of them uh, in, in a single month. But I'm going to be keeping that list close at hand and working my way through them over the course of the next year or two. And then last but not least, one that uh, I'm excited to read. I've been wanting to read this for a long time. And Jack told me that if I ended up reading this, that he thought it might be a contender for my favorite read of the year. And so it is time to read the Mabino... The Mabino Gion. One of these days I'll learn how to pronounce it. I, I can't pronounce the title, but I know that this is one that I've wanted to read. It's, again, epic poem. There's a lot of those during the period. And it has some Arthurian tie-ins, and that's about all I know about it. Uh, other than that, Jack swears it's going to be a wonderful read for me. And that's enough. So there you have it. There is my June TBR. I've got way too many books I'm going to try to read. There's no way I'm going to get to all of them, but I am going to try to get to some of them, and hopefully I'll be able to finish May Strong and wrap up all of the books I'm in the middle of right now so that I can start off with a very fresh slate going into to June, because I'm excited to get to all of these texts. So let me know. Are you participating in any of these three events? What are you planning to read for any of them if you are? Uh, I'd love to have you along for Ellison on July 8th, or June 8th, uh, sorry. And I would really, really love to have people along for Ancient Ancientathon. Uh, so, yeah, let me know. Drop a comment. Uh, if you have a video that's up with the TBR, Feel free to share that link so I can make sure I go and watch it, because I would love to see what you're planning on reading. Thank you, BookTube.